This video talks about the Novak Djokovic Thomas Burdich semifinal match at Wimbledon. Now, Burdich, of course, is coming off that big upset over Roger Federer. And what Burdich did to win that match was he played big. He looked for an opportunity to attack, he took it, and he executed well enough to win that match, won it in four sets. So he served big and he attacked, particularly off the forehand side. Now, I expect the same tactics out of Burdich when he plays Djokovic. But I think the question for this match is, will those tactics be as effective against Djokovic as they were against Federer? And my view is, you know, Djokovic, I think, is a little bit uh, better equipped to, uh, to handle what Burdich is going to throw at him. Now, the, the first thing I think we should address is Burdich's serve, because Federer uh, struggled particularly with second serves, the, uh, the slice was sliding, if we pretend this is fed for a second, the, uh, the slice, this is a righty's backhand, the slice serve was sliding into fed. He got jammed, particularly on a lot of second serves, didn't really get those balls into play. Bunch of break chances, he didn't even get the return in, and he was one for eight on break chances. That obviously had a huge impact on, uh, on the match. Now, Djokovic is, you know, he's got a two-handed backhand, so Burdich isn't going to be able to exploit the backhand side quite as well. Uh, Djokovic is going to be able to handle more of those balls, particularly the ones higher in the strike zone. So I don't expect Djokovic to give away as many points, free points, particularly on those second serves. And uh, I think that's going to be an important factor for Djokovic, particularly on break chances. I don't see Djokovic converting at such a poor rate. I think he'll do a much better job of converting break chances. Now, if we talk about the tactics from this match, one of the things that Burdich did very well was get in exchanges where he was sending balls to Fed's backhand. Uh, doesn't matter if it was a backhand or a forehand, but he would send hard, flat balls. It was more effective off the forehand side. When Burdich hit a forehand, he really was able to pressure Fed because one of the things that Fed likes to do is use his slice, and he'll particularly against a guy like Burdich, 6'5", that's an effective play. You get that ball low on grass, not going to get up. Burdich isn't going to be able to take big cuts at the ball because he has to get it up and down over the net and have enough topspin to pull it into court. So it really would dull the pace that Burdich could put on the ball. Well, Burdich did a nice job of never giving Fed an opportunity to really work that slice in. He was going hard from the first look to Fed's backhand, and when somebody's blasting the ball at your backhand, it's hard to really get a hold of a slice. It's more appropriate in those situations to hit topspin, hit through the ball, get a little bit more control with the topspin. And that's what Fed was doing. But of course, those balls were sitting up. And at 6'5", that's fine for Burdich. He was just sort of wailing away at those shots. And Fed was not really in command of his directional control. I mean, he wasn't on point. He seemed a little loose against Burdich, so he was leaving a lot of balls in the middle of the court, wasn't really hitting his spots, you know, really placing the ball well. So Burdich had a lot of opportunities to take cuts and really pressure fed. That's obviously exactly what he did to great effect, won that match in four sets. Well, Djokovic, again, let's go back to that two-handed backhand. Burdich sent some hard, flat balls to Jokes backhand, Djokovic's backhand. That's not going to be a problem for Djokovic. He's going to handle those with the two hands on the racket much better than Fed. His reply is going to be hit with much more authority, and that's not going to give Burdich as many opportunities to really attack Djokovic's ground strokes. Now, Djokovic, I also expect, is going to have more directional control off of his backhand side. One of the things that makes Djokovic such a good player is that his backhand has great directional control. He can handle pace, he can change direction really well. And that means he's gonna be able to go cross court and hit his spots, keep it to Burdich's backhand, move Burdich off the court a little bit more than Fed was able to. But I think the, one of the keys here, one of the important things that Djokovic is gonna be able to do is take balls down the line effectively. So this is something that Federer really couldn't do under pressure, one-handed backhand. When you really gun a ball at Fed's backhand, he doesn't have amazing directional control like a guy like Djokovic might. I mean, Djokovic is going to be able to pull off 
the down the line backhand. That's one of his signature, signature shots that really makes him a tough opponent to play when he's on point. So I'm expecting some down the line backhands that's going to keep Burditch off balance. Again, against Fed, Burditch expected the ball in this area of the court. I think Djokovic is going to do a better job of expanding the court, keeping Burditch on the move. Burditch at 6'5", he's a nice mover, but you know, you, at 6'5", you're not going to be as fleet as foot as some of the other players. So if Djokovic is able to get Burditch on the run, on the move, then, well, you take this, except you move it down here. Now Djokovic is going to get some balls in the middle of the court that he can attack. So, you know, I think this match is going to come down to, um, I, I think a lot of it's going to depend on Burditch's end of the court. Against Fetty, sir, 58% first serve. I think he needs to do better than that against Djokovic because Djokovic is going to be more effective off of the return. I don't, again, I don't expect Djokovic to give, his way, give away as many second serve points. Um, Burditch is going to have to pl you know, hit big again and really take, uh, take his chances and play extremely well for him, to, uh, for him to win this match. And I think you know, earlier in this tournament, particularly the first round, Djokovic looked a little rusty. But he's been playing better and better and better, and he looked great against Lou. And I think what's very important is that he's serving well again. Um, he served, I believe, 63% against Lou. And more importantly, Djokovic has regained his confidence in that shot. And at the Pro Tour, confidence in your shots is so important. I mean, it, it, it is kind of hard to grasp how important it is simply to walk onto the court and be comfortable and be confident in your game. And I, I feel like Djokovic is at that point um, right now. So I think, you know, this is, this is a really tough match to call um, because I think a lot of it def depends on Burditch's level. But I'm I'm inclined to go Djokovic in uh, in four sets is my is my call uh, with this match again you know that I wouldn't be surprised if Burdich comes out and just plays huge and when it, when you have a guy like Burdich who has the big serve and big groundies if he's hitting his spots playing well you know there's not much you can do in that situation but uh, you know my my feeling is um, Djokovic is going to take this match in a, in a in a well contested uh, four set match. To close this video, I'd like to invite you to join me and Ian Westerman of EssentialTennis.com this Sunday during the Wimbledon final. Ian and I are going to be broadcasting live like we did for the Aussie Open and the French Open. We're going to be having a live webcast during the match. We're going to be offering our commentary, got a chat box going, so y'all can interact with us, ask us questions, have us diagram plays on the dry erase board, and so on. We've also got a bunch of cool prizes to give away, so cool free prizes. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you are watching the match, please uh, you know, watch it on your television and then on your computer. Tune in to uh, our website, fuzzyyellowballs.com, and join us for the final. So we will see you on Sunday. Did you know that there are only five simple things you need to do to have a textbook forehand like Roger Federer? If you click the link in the description of this video and visit our website, you'll learn why Federer's forehand is so good and how you can copy his technique. And this entire 45-minute lesson is 100% free. Join the thousands who have already learned what these five simple things are and take control of your forehand today.